gathered here, the family and friends, Gracie and family. This is the moment we announce and solemnize their marriage, the, ra the relationship in which they choose to look together in the same direction and direct their lives together towards common ideals and goals. They've invited their family and friends to share in this experience as they affirm each other as partners and as they establish a home and fulfill a life together. As we share with them in this celebration of worship, may we all grow ourselves in love and joy and hope. To mark that hope and joy and the miracle of this day, I would invite you each to greet each other I've been asked to read um, from some of the treasured works of Khalil Gibran. This is a poem that he wrote about marriage. It goes like this. Here. Here love begins to render the prose of life into hymns and canticles of praise. With music that is set by night to be sung in the day. Here. Here love's longing draws back the veil and illumines the recesses of the heart, creating a happiness that no other happiness can surpass but that of the soul when she embraces God. Marriage is the union of two divinities that a third might be born on earth. It is the union of two souls in a strong love for the abolishment of separate. It is that higher unity which fuses the separate unity within the future. It is the golden ring in a chain whose beginning is a glass and whose ending is eternity. It is the pure ray that falls from an unblemished God to fructify and bless the field of divine And the first land eyes of the beloved, the blood that feeds sown in the human heart, and the first kiss of the lips like a flower on the branch of the tree of life. So, the union of two lovers in marriage is like the first fruit of the first flower of that tree. Dear friends, out of affection for Xander and Lucy, we've gathered together to witness and bless their mutual vows, which will unite them in marriage. We remember here today all the love which has been here through the years, through parents, Jim and Alan, Ken and Judy, and through the many loved ones here today and gone beyond up to this day. To this moment, they bring the fullness of their heart and the treasure to share with one another. They bring the dreams bind them together, they bring that particular personality and spirit which is uniquely their own and out of which will grow the reality of their life together. We rejoice with them as this outer symbol of an inward union of a union created by friendship, respect, and love. To mark this moment is ask Josh, Alexander's uh, brother, do a reading. It's something that he himself translated from the Polish. It was written by Izbava Vinborska. It's called True Love. <coughs> True Love? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> A world with only two people in it? Two people oblivious to the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to believe.
believe that this is normal? <laughs> We're supposed to believe that this is practical? <laughs> Celebrating themselves for no reason. <laughs> different from a million other people, but convinced they are. And on what ground? None. <laughs> Light is impartial. Why should it fall on exactly these two? An insult to justice? Exactly. A violation of principles carefully built upon a solid moral foundation? Guilty. <laughs> Look at how happy they are. <laughs> try to hide it a little. <laughs> Make some depression for your friends' sake. <laughs> some laughs. Disgusting. <laughs> Are their words deceptively sensible. <laughs> Those rituals of theirs, their miniature courtesies, the elaborate way they fuss over one another. It's a conspiracy against you, Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what would happen if people decided to follow their example? What hope would religion or poetry have? Who would bother to remember anything? Or give anything up or stay inside the line? True love. Do we need it? Tax and common sense suggest that we remain silent before this greatest of life scandals. A large number of our children are born without any help from it. <laughs> <laughs> so rare. Good luck populating the earth with it. <laughs> Let the people who don't know true love argue that it doesn't exist. Their faith will make it easier for them to live and die. <laughs> Elder, Lucy's uh, dad, is going to be reading a poem by uh, Constantine Kopalki. Some of you may know. Inviting us to look forward, it's called Ithaca. Well, one of the real joys of my life was uh, reading stories with Lucy when she was very small. Yeah. So we read the story of Odysseus, and we reread it, and we reread it. Mm -hmm. you know, crossed and we crossed the wide dark waters. Uh, Xander and Lucy chose this poem, which speaks to the journey that we're all on. Ithaca, when you set out for Ithaca, ask that your way be long, full of adventure, full of instruction. The Lastragonians and the Cyclops, angry Poseidon, <laughs> do not fear them. Such as these you will never find as long as your thought is lofty, as long as a rare emotion touch your spirit and your body. The Lastragonians and the Cyclops, angry Poseidon, you will not meet them unless you carry them in your soul, unless your soul raise them up before you. Ask that your way be long, at many a summer dawn to enter with what gratitude what joy, sports seen for the first time. To stop at Phoenician trading centers and to buy good merchandise, mother of pearl and coral, amber and ebony, and sensuous perfumes of every kind. Sensuous perfumes as lavishly as you can. To visit many Egyptian cities, to gather stores of knowledge from the learned. Ask Ithaca, always in your mind. Your arrival there is what you're destined for. But don't in the least hurry the journey. Better it lasts for years. So that when you reach the island, you are old, rich with all you have gained on the way, not expecting Ithaca to give you wealth. Ithaca gave you a splendid journey. Without her, you would not have set out. She hasn't anything else to give you. And if you find her poor, Ithaca hasn't deceived you. So wise have you become of such experience that already you'll have understood what these Ithacas mean.
in the past few weeks before leading up to this wedding, my family and I have been going through our house, getting ready to pack up and move on. And um, in keeping with the tradition of something new and something old and something borrowed, something blue, I was looking for something for Lucy, not really knowing what, hoping something would show itself. And I happened upon, in my mother's last diary, She wrote that um, I feel that if if she could say anything today to Lucy, what she would have to say to Lucy and Banner, titled "Our Family." Our family is a circle of strength and love. With every birth and every union, the circle grows. With every joy shared adds more love. Every crisis faced together makes the circle stronger. Everyone here who is able to move uh, <laughs> could step a little bit closer as a sign of support. We would welcome you.
Thank you. 